second down nine for Notre Dame. Johnson, their offensive coordinator, told me he will wait and wait. This is right down the middle against man-for-man -man coverage. McAfee is open and a tremendous throw, the most difficult throw there is in football. Look at that kick. Boy, McAfee is something else. Fourth down, goal to go from a half a yard. Going into high school, Ken McAfee was looked at as just a regular kid who walked the halls in Brockton, Massachusetts. That quickly changed throughout his high school career. Well, the, uh, you know, we, we played uh, junior high football back in those days, you know, uh, which has now become middle school. You know, it was 7th and 8th grade when I went there. It was 7th, 8th, and 9th. Um, and now, you know, 7th and 8th grade is, is what's called middle school. So. I didn't have a whole lot of expectations. I wasn't even going to try out for the varsity football team when I when I played uh, my freshman year. So um, after coming out of the eighth grade, I had actually broken my ankle and only played in one and a half games as an eighth grader. So my expectations were zero. So I was going to try out for the freshman football team at Brockton High. And uh, Armand Colombo, who was our coach at the time, called me on the phone and, and invited me to uh, try out for the varsity, which Back in those days, you needed an invitation to, to try out. So, uh, so my expectations were very low until he made that call, and I said to my father, "I said, why is he calling me?" I said, "I'm, you know, I'm, I don't have any expectations to play varsity football, certainly." So, uh, so my expectations were low. If I made it, fine. If I didn't, that was fine too. I, I, I didn't really care too much about it. But uh, come the first game, I was a starting, you know, tight end. So it was, uh, it worked out. <laughs> McAfee dominated at the high school level and had an impact on Brockton's football team immediately. As a freshman, he was looked at as a top target for the boxers. Over the course of his four years at Brockton, teams became very familiar with the massive tight end, and opponents tried everything they could to shut him down, but nobody could find the answer. He emerged as an elite prospect. You know, there's a lot of, uh, I, I got letters from about 205 schools, I think, for, you know, for uh, scholarship offers. And um, Notre Dame, once I visited Notre Dame, it was myself, uh, I, I felt myself comparing every other school that I visited to Notre Dame. So I said, well, if I'm comparing all these schools that I'm visiting to Notre Dame, why don't I just go to Notre Dame? <laughs> you know? uh, but it was, it, it was a good fit for me because of the academic and athletic combination couldn't be surpassed by any school that I was recruited by. I mean, I think you know, a, lot of, a lot of schools may differ with that comment, but it was true from my perspective. Um, because I, I wanted to enroll in the pre-med program, and um, a lot of schools kind of frowned upon that because there was a lot of labs involved and extra, extra courses that you had to take. So it was, it was something that, uh, from an academic standpoint, obviously, that was primarily the reason to attend college at that time, you know. So, uh, obviously, Notre Dame having won the uh, national championship the year before I got there, that, that played a role too, you know. <laughs> but uh, obviously, they had a great football program, uh, great athletic program, but the best part about it was the academic aspect of it, which uh, the coaches allowed you to, to take any type of course that you wanted to. And it didn't, it didn't matter if it impacted on your uh, going to football practice or whatever. So uh, from that perspective, you know, it was very beneficial for me and obviously worked out for the best, you know. But uh, recruiting back in those days was a, was a little bit different. You know, these days kids are committing in their sophomore and junior year to colleges. Back then, you know, we haven't really started visiting a school until after the season was over. So 
Uh, my first visit was, I think, in December, you know, my senior year, you know, we signed a letter of intent in April. So uh, you only had a, a couple of months to visit the schools you want. But you did have unlimited visits back then. I think now you can only visit five schools. Uh, back then I had, I think I had uh, 28 visits set up, but I only went to 12. I got that kind of bored with it after a while, you know. So uh, 12 was enough, and that, that was enough to make my decision, so. Back-to-back -to -back Super Bowl wins in 1972 and 1973 definitely lured in some attention to go along with three undefeated seasons for the Brockton Boxers, all of which McAfee played a big role in. However, some questioned if the stud could carry his play over to the collegiate level. Um, so we were on some very good teams and going to Notre Dame, you look around and you, even though you don't hear of a lot of these guys, it seemed like everybody was good. <laughs> so. Uh, in, in high school, you know, you could, you could kind of see that you may be a little bit better from a team standpoint than another team that you would be playing. In, in college, uh, it was a lot different because the guys are bigger, faster, stronger, uh, and, and it just changes the whole dynamic of, of football. Um, so there's definitely a learning process involved, you know, when you, when you take that step. And uh, coming from Brockton, you know, in Massachusetts, you know, not a, not a real big hotbed of football, you know, but, uh, you know, most of, most of my teammates were from Michigan, Cincinnati, Ohio, um, you know, California, Florida, where, where football was really prominent uh, in the high schools in those areas. So it was, uh, it was quite the transition, you know, there's a little bit of nerves involved initially, but uh, you just get out there and you have to prove yourself just like everybody else, and that's what I did, you know, I utilized the, the knowledge that uh, was passed on to me by our coaches at Brockton High, and it was you know, very, uh, very amenable to the, the Notre Dame type of style uh, of offense that they ran. Uh, so it was, uh, it was very beneficial for me having gone to Brockton High under the tutelage of Armin Colombo and the coaches there. You know, so uh, it worked out well. As great of a player McAfee was, he always had his mind set on academics too. Notre Dame is an extremely competitive school and is looked at as one of the top schools in the country. This past year, they accepted only 18% of some of the top students in the world. No, I basically, I, I just wanted to get through organic chemistry at that time. You know? <laughs> but uh, at, uh, at Notre Dame in, um, in those days, you know, the, the, uh, the academics really were, prim were primarily bigger cause for concern than was athletics. Um, but in going, to, in going to Notre Dame, um, you know, you, you accept a certain amount of responsibility and you expect, accept the challenges that await you there. So um, having, having gone there and attended uh, classes and then playing football um, was, a, was a combination that I don't think a lot of other schools really could have you know I, we used to come out late to practice on I think it was Wednesday or Thursday because three or four of us were in the pre-med program and we were we were uh, in labs until you know three o'clock in the afternoon so we'd come out and be half you know half the practice would be over and would be passing ten guys that were leaving to take an accounting exam or something and uh, so the uh, the academic aspect of it was much more prominent than uh, would be from a lot of other schools I think. The man who threw the ball to McAfee toward the second half of his collegiate career was someone named Joe Montana. Just a guy that passed for over 40,000 yards, 270 touchdowns, to go with four Super Bowl rings in his NFL career. Uh, Joe actually, uh, you know, he played intermittently um, in. Um, the sophomore year, you know, we were losing a couple of games and they brought him in the fourth quarter and he, he came back and beat North Carolina Air Force and, and he never really started as a sophomore. Um, and then he got hurt, so he had to sit out his junior year. So he never really played much until senior year, uh, my senior year, which would have been his junior year. Um, and um, he never started until like the, the fourth game of the season, my senior year. So. Uh, Everyone knew that he had the ability to play, you know, and everyone had confidence in him. He's kind of a, a quiet, confident type of kid. He wasn't a big rah-rah leader, but uh, everyone knew his ability uh, was paramount to our success. So 
It was a little bit of controversy as far as the quarterback was concerned at that time, uh, but everyone knew Joe was a was a natural leader and a natural athlete, and he was he was going to be the the cause for our success, and a lot of guys knew that. So once he started establishing himself more as a as a starting quarterback, you know, we never we never lost another game my senior year and won the national championship. So he was, uh, you know, he's a great guy. He's kind of a quiet guy, but uh, great sense of humor, great athlete, and you know. Thankfully, he was there when, when we needed him. Yeah. A game that stood out in McAfee's career was the 1977 Green Jersey game against USC. He recorded a huge two touchdowns that game. Well, that was fabulous because we had been leading USC the last three years going into the fourth quarter, and we ended up losing the game. So this was really the seniors' last opportunity to play USC and, and beat them. So uh, Dan Devine, our coach, you know, came up with this idea that he wanted something that would really give us a lot of uh, impetus to, to play against USC and came up with the green jersey idea. Um, and uh, we actually went out that game and practiced in our blue jerseys, which uh, everyone said, okay, well, you know, there's another game, it's USC, but these, our jerseys weren't that special. Um, and I was always the last one to come in, in and out of the locker room, it was just a, a thing that I did. But uh, I was coming off the field and I could just hear this noise building in our locker room. And it was just guys screaming and yelling. The closer I got up the stairs to the locker room, I could, it was pandemonium in the locker room. Like people are yelling and screaming and, and I said, well, what's going on? Everyone's like putting their green jerseys on. And I, and I said, gee, this is, this is amazing. It seemed like we already won the game, you know? So, uh, so I, I kind of reminded everyone we still had a game to play. It didn't really matter what color the jerseys were, but uh, everyone was excited about it. And we have, uh, we have some guys that played in the NFL with players that had played on that USC team. And they readily admitted when they saw us running out of the locker room with the green jerseys on, they said there's no way they were gonna win that game. So it was, uh, it was very emotional, you know, beforehand, and then we we were winning, I think, 22 to seven at halftime or whatever, and uh, we had been winning 24 to nothing my my uh, refreshment year at USC, and we ended up losing 55 to 24. So even though I, even though we were winning 22 to seven, I again reminded everyone. I said, look, this is. You know, the game's not over. We still have another half to play, so we don't want them getting another 50 points on us like they did three years ago. So, uh, but that game was definitely a, a motivating factor to to progress through the national championship that year. Selected seventh overall in the 1978 NFL Draft, most think he must have been all over the cameras that day. But the draft was a little different back then. Oh, it was really. Uh, it was it's strange, you know, back then, um, you know, now they have the top 20 guys that are going to be uh, uh, drafted. Uh, they go to New York and they have this big presentation and, uh, you know, the commissioner comes out and gives them the, you know, the shirt and all that. But when I got drafted, um, it was about, I think, 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. I got a call on the phone and it was the Boston Herald. And they said, uh, well, how do you feel about your draft position? I said, what draft position? What are you talking about? They said, what do you mean? You haven't gotten contacted by the team yet? I said, no. I said, I just woke up. I said, I haven't, no one has called me yet. He goes, well, you just got drafted seventh by the 49ers. I said, oh, that's nice. That's great. <laughs> so, uh, so I didn't really, there was no fanfare or anything like that. And so I talked to the reporter for, you know, 15 or 20 minutes. About an hour later, San Francisco called me and told me that I had been drafted and they had a, a conversation uh, on the telephone with a bunch of reporters and that was basically it. You know? so, uh, so all the fanfare that they have now and make the, it's on TV, on ESPN and, and all those uh, television programs back then was, it wasn't really a big thing. So you know, it, was, it was nice to be drafted seventh, but I looked around the room and I was the only one in it, you know, there was, wasn't anybody around you know, so, to share it with, you know, so. The NFL was a much tougher game compared to the NCAA. McAfee still had a solid career to the few that he played in. Um, you know, the NFL was uh, a little different, you know, when I, I told you I went from Brockton High to, to Notre Dame, everyone seemed like they were good. Um, 
in the NFL, that is definitely the situation. Everybody's good. I mean, there's guys you never heard of. You never heard of the college they came from, and um, they're they're there to. It's a job to them, and they want to make sure they hold on to their job, and they'll knock your head off if they if they have to to keep their job. So. You get to the NFL, every single person is good. You know, there are no, they're no slackers in the NFL, you know, so. Uh, so it was, it, was, it was real different, you know, and, and when you're trying to accommodate to them, I, I played on the worst team in the NFL, unfortunately, but uh, we were two and 14 my first year, two and 14 my second year, six and 10 my third year, and Bill Walsh came in as the head coach and wanted to make me a guard. Um, and um, I said, Bill, I said, I lost more games my rookie year than I did in high school and college combined. I said, There's, I don't think I want to go inside and play guard for a losing team, you know. So, uh, so I went back and finished dental school. And um, of course, the next year they won the Super Bowl. So it shows you how smart I am, you know. But unfortunately, uh, you know, they had they had great great years after that. Obviously, they won you know, four Super Bowls in the in the '80s and. Uh, Joe Montana had a great career, um, which we're very happy for him, obviously. But um, it's unfortunate, you know. The, the great thing about being a high draft choice, uh, it kind of wanes when you realize that you're playing for not a great team. Because the first few picks in the draft are playing for the worst teams in the NFL. Although the NFL didn't last long, he furthered his studies and became an extremely successful oral surgeon. Yeah, you know the. Uh, you know, going to dental school, there was a, a very progressive dean at the University of Pennsylvania who, who allowed me to go to school during the off season. So I'd actually play in the NFL from uh, July to December and go to school from January to June. I did that for three years and then just uh, finished up my dental school after I left football. Um, and then went on to, to do my oral surgery residency uh, as well at the University of Pennsylvania. But um, I never really wanted to be a dentist per se, you know, I, I really was interested in the surgical aspects of, of the profession. So that's why I went on to, to, uh, to pursue oral surgery uh, and, uh, you know, it's worked out fine. I love the profession. I love what I do, you know, and, and I can walk on Tuesday instead of limping around, you know, so it's, uh, so it, it, it's a lot better and, and I, I feel as though that uh, you know, in playing uh, football, you know, really prepares you for a lot of things in life. And, and certainly a profession that you choose to pursue in life, you know, is it really stems from a career in, in athletics. Ken McAfee has always been remembered as a football legend in the state of Massachusetts and the NCAA. Most players that end their NFL career short wave the white flag and just coast the rest of life. McAfee pushed himself and accomplished what many few can. He's now a very successful oral surgeon and is living a great, happy life. Boy, McAfee is something else. Fourth down, goal to goal from a half.